is the Valley Today. New this morning, an elderly Minnesota woman is dead after a head-on crash near Little Falls. State troopers say the victim was on Highway 27 yesterday afternoon when an oncoming car crossed the center line and hit her. Her name is not yet being released, but authorities do say she's a 79-year-old woman from Eagle Bend, Minnesota. The driver of the car that hit her is a man from Iowa. He was not seriously hurt. There's no indication on the police report about whether or not charges will be filed. The Grand Forks County Sheriff's Office is taking over the search for a missing woman with special needs after an hours long search at the Grand Forks Air Force Base. 18 year old Haley Sullivan left the family campground sometime between Monday night and early yesterday morning. Picture up on your screen right now. She is 5'2 with brown hair and glasses and was last seen wearing blue jeans. The search on the base was suspended last night, but earlier in the day, military members and volunteers conducted a grid search for the woman. This is video of that search. People living in or near the base are urged to check their yards, garages and rooms for any clues of her. We have not yet heard from sheriff's officials this morning on where they will be looking today. Anyone with information on Sullivan's disappearance should contact the Grand Forks County Sheriff's Department. 602 now on this Wednesday morning. Let's check our forecast. The sun up nice and bright at this hour, Lisa. Yeah, beautiful out there this morning. We've got calm conditions. It's sunny and dry, so no trouble from the weather, at least when it comes to your morning drive and conditions that should be pretty comfortable to start off today. Here's a look at our temperatures. We are into the 50s right now to some low 60s at 61 in Devil's Lake. Most of us reporting sunshine, but you see in Grand Forks, Jamestown and Bemidji, we have some clouds showing up here. That's fog that's being detected. And let's take a look at our visibility reports coming in. It's actually worsening in a couple of spots. We're down to a quarter mile visibility in Jamestown, so some fog really developing in a hurry there in the last few minutes. And then over to the east, we're looking at Minoman now being our place that is experiencing the worst of it right now. We have visibility at zero. In Bemidji, we've improved a bit at a quarter mile and Bedette's at a quarter mile visibility too, but some dense fog still in that area and we're down slightly in Hallock to a mile and a half for visibility. So watch out for fog. That's our hazard this morning as far as hitting the roads and your tri-state map on our radar is showing very dry weather, so we don't have to contend with that at least. Here's a look at our forecast. Expect temperatures to be back into the 70s to some low, maybe even mid 80s today. Lots of sun coming up with wind that is not as strong as it's been the last couple of days. And here's the great news for those who have been dealing with daily thunderstorms over to the east. Well, that's moved on now, so you can expect to have some dry weather there as well. Get a little bit of a break from stormy weather. Now we do have more coming up starting Thursday and into Friday, and that's kind of on the start of what will be a very muggy time frame. And of course, the heat wave coming combined with that's going to make it feel even worse. Next couple of days or today and into Thursday morning, we're doing OK, so I would say the next 24 hours. But you can see our graph spiking on our muggy meter here, getting into that humid to even steamy category heading into the end of the week and the weekend. And again, that's combining with some heat. We'll have more details on what to expect as we make our way into our latest heat wave coming up in just a couple of minutes. I feel like that graph is pretty telling, Lisa. That yellow line really takes a shot upward. Yeah, you're going to want to be ready for this. It's not just 90 degree temperatures. It's that combo that really gets you. So hydration is important. Drink lots of water coming up here and find ways to stay cool. OK, thank you, Lisa. 604 now the police chief in Uvalde, Texas is out as a city council member. The council accepted the resignation of Pete Arredondo last night. Arredondo was elected just weeks before the Robb Elementary School shooting. He says he's stepping down from his council position to minimize distractions. He is the central figure in response to that shooting, including the decision to avoid confronting the 18 year old gunman. That shooting left 19 children and two teachers dead. North Dakota Attorney General Drew Wrigley says body cam video of a deadly officer involved shooting in Fargo from last week will not be released until the proceedings are complete. 28 year old Shane Netterville was shot and killed by police as they say he tried to run them down last Friday. Police were responding to a call about people slumped over in a car. When officers tried to make contact with the people, they say the driver took off. Officer Adam O'Brien fired at the car. Netterville was hit and killed. 
Protesters at a rally outside of Fargo City Hall on Monday night called for the release of that body cam video. Meanwhile, police have caught up with the suspect who they say took off running during that shooting. They found Derek Stanley in North Fargo yesterday and then handed him over to the North Dakota Bureau of Criminal Investigation. They're now handling that case. Police are reminding the public that this deadly shooting will be the topic of tomorrow's police oversight and advisory board meeting. Police Chief David Zabolski is encouraging people to attend or to watch it online. Legal experts are now weighing in on that shooting. They say the investigation will take time, with the biggest question being whether it was reasonable or not for police to use deadly force, and whether the man behind the wheel of the stolen van was fleeing or trying to run over the officers. The vehicle can certainly be considered as a weapon. You can kill somebody with a car. But then you also look at it from the officer's perspective. Did he really believe that that car was targeted at him and he had no other choice but to, uh, but to fire? The man who fired that shot, Officer O'Brien, is on administrative leave while the state BCI investigates. A North Dakota woman is dead. A man is facing charges in a hit and run crash on I-94 in Barnes County, North Dakota. It happened around 4 yesterday morning near Tower City. The North Dakota Highway Patrol says a vehicle driven by 26-year-old Wyatt Stalok of Jamestown rear-ended a pickup that was hauling a trailer. The front vehicle and trailer then hit the ditch and rolled. One woman was killed. Another woman and a teenager were hurt, but troopers say that Stalok drove away. Police later arrested him for leaving the scene of an accident. All of the victims were from Hazen. It's the four year anniversary of the disappearance of Brenda Cardis in Fargo and police are again asking for your help. She left Center Inc on West Track Drive on July 12, 2018. Her remains were found more than a month later at Riverside Cemetery in Fargo. Contact Fargo PD if you have any information about this case. Hundreds of animals suspected of being neglected have been seized in counties in North Dakota. They looked like the animals that are up on your screen right now. The sheriff's office in Roulette County acted on a tip. They found about 500 head of cattle, many of them dead on that property. Officials say the animals did not have enough feed. Owners Steve Nicholson and Tanner and Cameron Malang then surrendered the animals. A total of 700 cows were seized from numerous counties in North Dakota, all belonging to Nicholson. Now other people are taking care for the animals and feeding them enough until they can be sold again. The North Dakota Catholic Conference says a lawsuit filed by the Red River Women's Clinic against the state of North Dakota is a, quote, slap in the face to the people of North Dakota. They say the attempt to stop the abortion ban in an attempt is an attempt, rather, to delay the inevitable. The Red River Women's Clinic filed a suit on January 6 against the state, arguing that the trigger abortion ban is unconstitutional under North Dakota law. That lawsuit is also disputing the day when the ban is supposed to go into effect, and that is July 28th. If you live in Polk County and suffer damages to your property due to the spring flooding, the Minnesota Homeland Security and Emergency Management Department wants to hear from you no later than this Friday. Damage must be to your home, the driveway, roads, bridges, wells, or septic tanks. For more information and a link to apply, find this story on your VNL News app. Still to come this morning on the Valley Today, we are heading behind the scenes this morning at Amazon in West Fargo. This is a live look right now as workers process all of those packages on this big prime day. But next, Lisa Green is in with a check of your Wednesday forecast. That's right here on the Valley Today.